talking to you today about a topic that I'm very passionate about, and that's uh, quadriceps tendon ACL reconstruction. So why am I a fan of the quadriceps tendon ACL reconstruction? Well, for me, it's a low morbidity autograft that has comparable outcomes to the other autograft options that are available to us. It has almost twice as much collagen than a similar size BTB, has the versatility to be harvested as an all soft tissue graft for our pediatric patients, while not sacrificing knee flexion strength. It's also versatile, and it can be harvested and prepared for many different fixation techniques. And I've certainly had my experience with that in practice. As I started out using quadriceps tendon, and I still do today, started out using quadriceps tendon with bone with a BTB tightrope on the femoral side, subsequently shifted to an all soft tissue graft with interferon screw fixation on the femoral and tibial sides, and then transitioned to now a quad link all inside technique. But if you've used quadriceps tendon before, particularly before the launch of the quadriceps tendon harvesting system, you may have had the same experience that I had. And I was frustrated at the fact that this low morbidity autograft was not really being harvested in a low morbidity fashion. You either had to create large incisions to be able to free the graft proximally, or I found myself sometimes blindly taking curved males through a small incision trying to free that graft from the proximal aspect. So we encountered some challenges and it was, how do you take this graft, free it from the quadriceps tendon, do this through a minimally invasive incision, and then the cherry on top of the challenge was then, how do you take a cylindrical piece of tissue and attach tight ropes to the end to create the fixation that you desired for your patients? But before we get into the how, let's talk a little bit about the why. So this graft performs similarly to BTB, and it's been shown in the published studies, and if we look at the SOS data as well, it's almost a parallel line when we look at the VAS and we look at the same knee scores. Pretty much similar performance up to two years in the data that we have. When you look at the published data comparing quadriceps tendon to bone patellar tendon bone, the majority of the studies are comparing quadriceps tendon with bone to BTB, but you see similar laxity in outcome measures and failure rates with significantly decreased donor site morbidity for the patients. Now, direct comparisons with a soft tissue graft show no difference between quad tendon bone and all soft tissue, but there were no comparisons to an all soft tissue uh, graft with BTB. And recently this year, we published our data on this showing similar failure rates that published in the literature between zero and 5% and equal uh, patient reported outcome scores. When you compare it to hamstrings, the results show similar clinical outcomes, stability and morbidity to hamstring grafts with greater graft maturity on MRI at six months and less pain immediately post-op. When you do look at larger studies, the Danish uh, knee ligament registry data did show a slightly higher failure rate comparing quad tendon to BTB and hamstrings. However, this 4.7% failure rate is also still within that 0 to 5% reported in the literature. Two more recent systematic reviews published in the last two years place quadriceps tendon performing above hamstrings in terms of laxity and failure rate um, and echoed the similar findings of less donor site morbidity with equivalent laxity measures and failure rates to BTB. So as the data compiles, there's more and more data justifying or screaming for the use of quadriceps tendon as a reasonable alternative for your ACL reconstruction. So once you've convinced yourself that this in fact is a reliable option, now we need to learn how. And Fulkerson, uh, several years prior, published some harvesting guidelines for the quadriceps tendon. Now, the main thing we need to recognize is, regardless your reconstruction technique, there's plenty of real estate to obtain your graft, whether it's through an all-inside technique or for a, a full tibial tunnel technique. The medial aspect of the tendon is thicker, and I do like to obtain my grafts more from the medial side. But as with any other surgical technique, there are complications that can happen. And these are generally avoided if you stick to a shorter harvest or an all-inside technique. Hematoma can form, especially if you stray into the muscle or you go too far lateral where you can hit a branch of the lateral femoral circumflex artery, though this is rare. If you go too far proximal and trying to get too much of a large, lengthy graft, you may detach the rectus femoris. And although this is exceedingly rare, this is mainly solely a cosmetic deformity. 
fracture has been described. It's actually been in most studies described as less frequent than that in BTB. However, one series did publish a, a slightly higher frequency than this. And this was noted to be due to trying to obtain too large a bone block and straying too far away from the, uh, from the midline. But again, all this avoided if we stick to an equivalent soft tissue graft. Arthrofibrosis has also been described as a concern. Um, increasing the uh, Zerogenes found an increased risk in their retrospective review, uh, about 2.7 times the incidence. However, uh, that's not been all studies, and our series actually found half the incidence compared to BTB. From a preoperative planning standpoint, there's not much involved here. If you have a patient that's at least five feet tall, you will have at least seven centimeters of quadriceps tendon available to you, which is sufficient for an all inside technique. If you do want to predict whether you will have to take a full thickness graft or not, X has shown us that if you measure three centimeters above the superior pole of the patella and measure the thickness of the quadriceps tendon at that spot, anything less than seven millimeters in diameter, you're likely to go full thickness graft. And what happens if you take a full thickness graft? Well, fortunately, nothing really. Um, the outcomes between patients having undergone a full thickness harvest versus a partial thickness harvest are equivalent and there's no difference. In fact, if you're starting out and you're learning how to do a quadriceps tendon harvest, it might be quicker and easier to simply go full thickness as you start out and then simply repair the defect. And here I show you a quick video or I keep a knee scorpion available in all my quadriceps tendon harvest where I can perform a quick and easy repair of the deep capsular layer uh, prior to arthroscopy. Patient positioning is key. You want the knee flexed to 90 degrees of flexion to maintain that quadriceps tendon under tension. This is a graph that is much easier to learn in live surgery than it is actually in the lab when there's no tension on the quadriceps. So 90 degrees of flexion is key. I place my incision one centimeter proximal to the superior pole of the patella, and I extend that two centimeters proximal. Now I do that longitudinally. It can also be done transverse. And if you're doing a bone block harvest, you just extend that down distally. The biggest key if you are trying to do a minimally invasive harvest is find that subcutaneous fat layer just deep to the subcutaneous tissue and ellipse that tissue out. That is going to be the key for visualization deep down in the tissues underneath. Once that is, that is excised, I then split with metzenbaums proximally and distally creating a path and then complete that with a key elevator. And this is really the key to be able to get that visualization so you can see proximally all the way. I like to mark my, my proximal extent of the harvest. I mark that at seven centimeters. Here's where if you don't have direct visualization, a nanoscope or an arthroscope can be key to be able to see all the way up. The quad tendon cutting guide has made this simple and reproducible. The blades come in nine, 10, and 11 millimeters in diameter. And the handle is calibrated so you know exactly how far you're cutting when you're using this subcutaneously through a small incision. And it has a def stop of seven millimeters that keeps you from plunging and creating a full thickness defect if you're trying to avoid it. Once the longitudinal cuts are made, then it's simply a matter of sharply dissecting off the superior pole of the patella for a soft tissue graft. And this can be done with a 15 blade. Or at this point, you can extend down distal and obtain a bone block for your quadriceps tendon bone reconstruction. But by far my favorite piece of equipment and what really changed the game for me in that transition from quad tendon bone to doing a minimally invasive all inside technique has been the quad cutter. So this really allows us to free that graft proximally through a small distal incision and release that graft and take out exactly what we need. Now that handle, the cutter is calibrated so you know exactly how much graft you're obtaining. Pull the lock, squeeze the trigger, graft comes out beautiful graph for an ACL reconstruction. Now, if you've tried the earlier versions of trying to get a tightrope on this tissue, there were some challenges early on, and then the innovation brought forth the fiber loop with fiber tag, and that really changed the game in terms of adding strength to this quad tendon construct. But recently, with the fiber tag tightrope, this has made this graph preparation so much faster and simpler, cutting off at least 15 to 20 minutes of what graph prep time would be. So it's really, truly a game changer. So why consider the quadriceps tendon graft for your ACL reconstructions as comparable performance to other autograft options? It's a low morbidity autograft that can be obtained via minimally invasive approaches. 
and the innovation brought forth in the quadriceps tendon harvesting system and the fiber tag tightrope for fixation make this a truly simple, reliable, and efficient option for your ACL reconstructions. Thank you.